It's every single NBA player's goal to work hard in the offseason and come back the next year better than they've ever been and do more than anyone expected of them. Every player does this though and for the guys that do have breakout seasons, it's not always who you'd expect. But for this video, we're looking at the 10 players who look most likely to have a breakout season and win the most improved player award in the 2019 and 20 season. And for a lot of different reasons, there's a lot of different guys who are in that position. So on top of this 10, we got a few honorable mentions in DeJounte Murray, Mitchell Robinson, and Jaron Jackson Jr. Murray should have a big year, but after missing an entire season, I don't think he'll be off to as quick of a start. Mitchell Robinson still got a lot of untapped potential, but now he'll be playing behind Julius Robinson. Randall. Then Jaron Jackson Jr. will definitely be great in a few years, but I think he's the kind of guy that's going to slowly develop instead of all of a sudden have a huge year. So those had to be mentioned, but with them out of the way, we can get into number one in DeAndre Ayton. Even though Trey and Luka took over the Rookie of the Year talks all year long, DeAndre's on the sun. So I mean, no matter how good he played, it wasn't going to mean much. But he had a great year, averaging 16 and 10 on the season, scoring double digits in 86% of the games he played, and recording a double-double in 55% of them. And he did all that even though he didn't necessarily fit in with Devin Booker right away because they had their issues. And that's going to be their biggest obstacle going forward. If these two can get past it though, Aiden can and should easily average at least 20 and 10 every night next season. If he's going to want to take himself to the next level beyond next year though, he's going to have to develop a decent mid-range shot and improve on the defensive end. For his size and how athletic he is, he wasn't really a threat for Phoenix on that end. And wasn't really at Arizona either. So hopefully that'll come as he gains more experience. But then number two belongs to Pascal Siakam. After what we saw from Siakam this past season, there's no doubt in my mind that he's only going to get better next year and has all-star potential. Even with Leonard leaving, sure he did benefit from playing with him, but no part of his game is going to be affected by having to play without him. The only thing that's going to be changing for him is that he's going to be getting more opportunities to really show who he is on both ends of the floor. Because on defense, when the time comes, he'll not get the chance to guard the other team's best player, whether they're a power forward or a point guard. And I could see him putting up at least 20 a game while doing so. He can defend the perimeter, block shots down low, shoot the three, finish on fast breaks, and drive to the basket at an elite level. But if I had to pick one thing that he needs to improve on, it would be his three-point shot. He made a solid 37% of his threes in the regular season, but that number dropped down to 27% in the playoffs when the game slowed down. So it's something we can look out for and see if he can make a difference in in 2019 and 20. Number three is another guy who's going to be getting a bigger opportunity in Bam Adebayo. The Miami Heat have had high hopes since drafting him but they haven't been able to play him as much as they've wanted thanks to still dealing with Hassan Whiteside. But since he's gone now, Bam's going to be the full-time starter. And it's something that Eric Spolstra said he's looking forward to because of how much of a better fit he is with their fast-paced style. And it's something Bam's taken seriously too because he's been working hard to add a three-point shot to his game all summer long. Apparently it's not quite there yet because his lack of a shot was why he got cut from Team USA but still he's working on it and even without it being developed just yet with his new opportunity and now playing alongside Jimmy Butler we can only assume that he's got all the tools there to have a breakout season. Another guy that's found himself in a great position is number 4 in Malcolm Brogdon. Brogdon is now on the Indiana Pacers and couldn't have asked for a better place to end up. Oladipo is going to be out of action until at least December, which means that with this roster, Brogdon is going to be without a doubt the team's best scorer. And it's going to be within those first couple of months where we're going to get to see if he really will be a breakout star this season and in his career in general. Because as their starting point guard, he's going to have every opportunity to succeed on a winning team. And honestly, I have faith in him. He quietly became the 8th ever member of the 50-40-90 club last season. And on top of his shooting, he's just got a great all-around game. And if he plays great without Oladipo, I think he's going to play even better with him. Because both guys are perfect complements for each other. Victor can score and is a top tier defensive player, while Malcolm can shoot and score at ease. Which is why I feel he definitely deserved a spot in this video. But the number 5 goes to John Collins, who already had a breakout season this past year, jumping from averaging 10 and 7 as a rookie to putting up nearly 19 and 10 this year. A big part of his improvement came from him taking a lot more threes in 2019, and it's something you can expect to see from him even more this year. The Hawks probably aren't going to have a winning record 
it again, but I can still see Collins putting up at least 23 and 10 a game and being one of the main centerpieces for Atlanta if things go as planned, which would put him as a near all-star level player, but that's not going to happen until the Hawks as a team can put together some more wins. Then the number six spot goes to someone who without question deserves this spot in Karis Lovert, because the man was already on pace for a breakout season last year before going down with that injury. Two seasons ago, he was an average player, but before that injury last season, he was putting up a consistent 19 points a game. And then even against the 76ers in the playoffs when he came back, he went right back to putting up 21, 4, and 4. And while the Nets did switch things up, Katie's going to be out all year long, leaving Karis the starting spot. So all signs point to the fact that he'll pick up right where he left off. Number 7, Marvin Bagley. No official word on if the Kings plan on moving Bagley to the starting lineup, but I think they should. And if they do, he could have a huge year. He averaged 15 and 7 last year while only playing 25 minutes a game. And the only reason he didn't start was so the starters would have better floor spacing since he's not the best three point shooter. And that's really going to be the determining factor on if he starts and breaks out. He could always transition to playing center, but I feel like his game fits in better as a power forward, which makes shooting that much more important for him. So if he he does develop a solid shot this summer, he could be another 20 and 10 type of player. But if he comes back still not able to shoot, it wouldn't be surprising to see him in a similar situation to last season. Then we have another power forward for number 8 in Lowry Markkanen which is assuming that he stays fully healthy all year long. Because as a rookie, he missed 14 games and then 30 as a sophomore. But if he can play at least nearly the full season, there's nothing stopping him from averaging 23 and 10 on the year and becoming just as good of a scorer as Zach Levine. Because Kobe White's a rookie, Otto Porter's focus will be on defense, and Wendell Carter's still struggling to find his way. Which means that Lowry and Levine are both going to have every opportunity to be the team's clear leaders on offense. But for Markkanen specifically, he's athletic for his size and can score in every way imaginable. As a rookie, he became the only 7-footer to average 2 made 3s a game for an entire season, and he kept that pace up this year when healthy. Not to mention that he can shoot from mid-range, post up, and score off the dribble. I mean, in Dirk Nowitzki's best season, he put up 26 and 10, and one day I really think Markkanen has a similar ceiling. And this year is going to be a huge factor on if he can ever get to that point. But then the number 9 spot goes to Donovan Mitchell. And there's so many reasons 2019 and 20 is going to be a big one for him. The main one and most clear one though is because of Utah's roster. Now having a top two-way player in Bojan Bogdanovic and for the fact that he's going to be sharing the backcourt with Mike Conley. Last season, Donovan wasn't even close to becoming an all-star, finishing 12th in voting among Western Conference guards. But this year's going to be different. Because in 2018, he had a slow start, but in the second half of the season, Mitchell was averaging 27-4-4 on 41% from three. And to be honest, those are the kind of numbers I could see him averaging this year, especially with this team. In his first two seasons, he shared the backcourt with Ricky Rubio, which meant that Donovan was the opposing backcourt's only real threat, so they would put all their focus on him. But now with Conley, teams are going to have to play Mitchell straight up. Plus, over that second half stretch last year, he was shooting 50% on catch and shoot threes. And now Mike's going to be able to get him a lot more of those kinds of shots which is going to play a huge part in him possibly becoming an all-star. And that brings us to our number 10 and last spot on this list, and it was a tricky one. Because we have three potential duos where both players in it have just as good of a chance of breaking out. But I only wanted to include one duo, and the three are Buddy Heald and De'Aaron Fox, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and Lonzo and Brandon Ingram. And if I had to pick which I would say is most likely to break out, I can't give it to Jason and Jalen, because while the Celtics played better without Kyrie Irving, personally these two guys didn't get drastically better with him off the floor. And Kimba could make a big difference for them, but I don't know that he can make a big enough one for either of these guys to break out. And I can't pick Lonzo and Ingram, because while this is the duo that I want to see succeed the most, Lonzo's only played a total of 99 games in his first two seasons, and I just can't see him really playing that much better on the Pelicans. While on the other hand, Brandon Ingram could break out, but he has started dealing with those blood clot issues. So I couldn't pick them over Buddy Heald and De'Aaron Fox, where honestly I could really see either of these guys taking their game to the next level. And even though I already said Marvin Bagley will have a breakout season, that doesn't stop either of these guys from doing the same. I don't think it'll be both, but it could be one of them. It could be De'Aaron Fox, because he's got a lot of talent around him that he can make plays for, and he's got a lot of room to develop into a 20 point and 10 assist a game player. 
or it could be Buddy Yield because he continues to be one of the best shooters in the game and can use his increased opportunities to jump up to being a 23 or even 24 point per game scorer every night. And that's why I had to go with the Kings duo. I mean, I want to see everyone on this list have the best season of their career, but not everyone improves and some players unfortunately go in the other direction. But like I said, this is who I think is most likely to improve. I want to know what you guys think though, so comment who your pick is for the most improved player award. And comment and let me know anyone that you think I might have missed out on. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.